Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, Quick Hitter Edition. We're going out to the west side in New York, give a little bit of a Genovese crime family update, some housekeeping I want to do. First, let's just break down the administration. I think there's been some um, misleading reports uh, over the last couple of years, some more dated reports. So we all know Barney Belomo is the boss, the boss of bosses, most powerful. Don in New York City, he is basically a ghost, uh, doesn't really uh, show his face, uh, very um, secluded, almost bunker style leadership. That's kind of how you have to do it uh, these days. I mean, Tony Soprano said it a while back. Um, Ernie Muscarella uh, is number two at the underboss spot. People know that. We reported late last year that Patsy Perello, uh, after he got out of his uh, racketeering bust, was uh, up into the administration. We're putting him at conciliary right now. But I think the the, the piece of the puzzle that keeps on getting um, misreported is, is the street boss. Uh, Danny Pagano is the street boss of the Genovese crime family, the West Side. He is the final say day to day at the street level, reports directly to Barney and Ernie. He had been a, a street boss in the 2010s, the early part of the 2010s, had to uh, deal with some legal problems, go to uh, jail for a couple of years. And he's retaken the position, like four or five years ago, he retook the position. But uh, a lot of uh, current reports have him still as a capo. Uh, but I want to be very clear that that Danny is the street boss, and then that will lead us into some other news that uh, has been popping up related to Danny. And I want to, again, have some clarification and some of this reporting was dated. And I don't want to um, impugn where this is coming from. Jerry Capace, you know, I I always tip my hat to him. He is the godfather of of American mob writing, crime writing. None of us would be doing what we're doing now, people, you know, of my age, uh, if it wasn't for Jerry. And Jerry consistently still hits home runs, even in his 70s. He's knocking balls out of the park, breaking news, um, and and we got nothing but respect for that. But we just want uh, people to understand that at least last week uh, in in Jerry's column, he talked about a rivalry between uh, Genovese skipper uh, Tommy Figgs, Figgy Ficarada, and and Danny Pagano uh, when they talked about uh, Tommy Figs, who we have spoken about recently, getting booted out of the Carpenters Union. Uh, he had been a point man for Barney in the Genovese uh, in the Manhattan construction rackets. But the term rivalry, uh, I think, got people talking and uh, speculating. And, and again, to Jerry's credit, he cited um, – some some court reports, uh, court filings, and and some stuff from back in 2014. So it was about 10 years ago. Um, he didn't really follow that up. He, he said, you know, back in 2014 or, or 15, they were described as rivals, um, but kind of left it open ended. A lot of people assumed that meant that they were still rivals. Again, I, I just want some clarification on that for for my audience. Uh, Danny and Figgy are not rivals. They're they're working together. Um, there, there are no more hard feelings. There was an issue, um, around that time, uh, that, uh, Jerry was citing that from 2014, 15, there was some issues in the construction rackets that uh, resulted in a couple sit downs that, that Barney had to oversee with Tommy Figgs being on one side and Danny Pagano being on the other side. It never reached a point of, uh, you know, vitriol or where where they were you know trying to hurt each other it was a you know a typical occurrence in in any mob family you're going to have sit downs you're going to have business beefs that that will get resolved and you won't even hear about it after that so there might have been a a small amount of acrimony between uh, Danny and Tommy Figs five ten you know I should say ten years ago um but nothing in recent times and also I think that the fact that it's being uh, positioned as or categorized as a rivalry. I know that some in Danny's camp saw it uh, a little bit of a slap in the face because at that time, Danny was the street boss. Uh, Tommy Figs was a capo. Uh, so 
I think it might have looked like they were on some type of even playing field when Danny is always, um, or at least more recently, has been um, on and off at least uh, higher in the pecking order with the Genovese than Tommy Figs. You know, Tommy Figs is a, is just a, a really interesting character. If you're if you're gonna um, check out Gangster Report, uh, our uh, companion web magazine, I did a story about him. Uh, you know, on the streets, he's known as Tommy Figs or Figgy, but in his other life, he's Sensei Tom. Uh, he is a very um, well-reviewed uh, black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He teaches classes, uh, became a black belt, I believe, in his in his 60s. There's a self-published book that was written about his journey in the, in the martial arts. So it, it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, Sensei Tom is also Tommy Figs. Uh, so, you know, Tommy Figs came from uh, you know, came up under guys like Ernie, guys like uh, Tommy Palmer, Tommy Greco, uh, Jimmy from Jimmy from Eighth Street, Macera. He's a head of that old uh, Jimmy Macera crew, and Danny's just running the street. Everybody loves Danny. Um, he's got respect, uh, you know, across all five boroughs. You know, Barney allows him to speak for him uh, on the streets and with other families, and and just as a guy that is. Uh, top to bottom, what it means to be La Cosa Nostra in a, in a day and age when that is kind of far and few between. Mm-hmm.